Wait, wait. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is so big. If there's a fish that swims, I need to catch it. Fresh water, salt water, from a boat, from a kayak, or from four inches of ice. I thrive off the new experiences fishing gives me. I'm an ex-fishing guide turned videographer calling Lake of the Woods, Ontario my home. I'm Jay Siemens, and this is the Canadian Angle. All right, we're back on Lake of the Woods, and we're doing something unique today. We're going scuba diving. Uh, this is my first dive of the year, but it's more than just diving. We have an objective in mind, and that is finding snagged fishing lures. I've lost a lot of lures over the years. I've donated hundreds of dollars of tackle to the bottom of Lake of the Woods and today we're getting it back with my buddy Scott Green from Green Adventures and we're going to dive in Lake of the Woods. This is not your clear tropical water. This is going to be a little more tannic, a little more stained. We're not going to go too deep. We're going to stay shallower, try to find some lures and then we're going to try to catch some fish with those lures. But first we got to find some baits. All right, not the sunny day we were hoping for. There's crazy forest fires all across Canada right now, really. It's been a super dry summer, but I think we're gonna find some lures today. I got, I got a good feeling. All right. We made it to the spot. This is a very community walleye spot here. I'm thinking, I've seen people bass fish, walleye fish, musky fish here. It's Lake of the Woods. So any main lake point kind of holds a little bit of everything. Scotty brought a dive flag along. We were gonna tape it onto the talon. We're gonna drop the trolling motor in. We're gonna spot lock it, which is like a GPS anchoring deal. It's gonna keep the boat in spot. And uh, then we're gonna go diving. How does that look? Are people gonna know? Oh yeah. That'll work. So, for Scotty, we're gonna move some bolt cutters and some pliers in case he needs to get a bait off the bottom. And I'm gonna bring just a little multi-tool that I can clip on. It's got a knife, it's got pliers. You just, you never know when we're looking for hooks how tangled they might be in the bottom. So, that's what we're gonna do. All right, here we go to the bottom of Lake of the Woods. Well, we did our first little session. What did we go down, 15, 17 feet? Yep. I found some beautiful old Budweiser memorabilia artifacts. Cleaning up some garbage. Scotty got all the good stuff. What did you all get? An anchor. An anchor. An old bottle. I don't know. A bottom bouncer. A bottom bouncer. Well, we're gonna cool. use that for sure. And weight, spoon, jig. So cool. So we saw a couple bass and what Scotty was doing, I'm not sure if the footage will show it or not, he was, you're tapping rocks together? Yeah, I was Ta just tapping, 
with the pliers. And the smallmouth are so curious that they hear that ticking noise and they come in and that's like such a, uh, a confidence thing when you're using rattles in your lures. It shows you how fish are just attracted. Bass are so curious just to see that is it's super cool. First dive was a success. We got some lures. We're gonna take a closer look at them later, but we got one more dive location before we're calling it a morning. So we're not done quite yet. All right, we're at spot number two. More of a musky spot this time, a big rock pile with a saddle, saddle like a, a sunken finger that comes out from shore that connects this. <laughs> I'm gonna wear my life jacket. I almost, I almost <laughs> went in with my life jacket on. That would have been not good. Life jacket safe. All right, here we go, take two. Well, I think this is our best find yet. I'm guessing this is from this season. It's in, it's in pretty good shape, but we got our first musky bucktail. This is probably like the most common sort of bait on Lake of the Woods. And yeah, that's a pretty cool find. Stuck in the rocks, but I think that's it. I think, uh, I think we're calling it a morning. Had an awesome dive with Mr. Green. Next, we're gonna clean up these baits and uh, take them fishing. We're back in the boat. We found a bunch of lures. I was pretty impressed with the spread we found and I wanna catch some fish, but I don't just wanna catch one fish. I wanna to try to cover the spectrum. I wanna to try to catch walleye, bass, pike, and muskie, kind of the, the big four in Northern Ontario here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, look at this. We're gonna start at the bottom. We're gonna work our way up the food chain. We're gonna pretend that's a walleye. Then we're gonna to go to bass, and we're gonna to go to pike, and then we're gonna to go to muskie. We're gonna save the toughest for last. So first I'm gonna show you what we found for walleye options, okay? We got the most classic, a jig, a pink jig. We are going to obviously add some bait to that. I, I, bought, some, uh, I bought some juicy night crawlers right here from the local tackle store. So that should do the trick. Uh, we really don't have much modification needed for the jig for our first option, except the hook's kinda rusty. So get yourself a file. They're like 10 bucks, but it's just dull hooks just doesn't make sense to me. Spend a little bit of time to sharpen your hooks. This hook's bent out as well, so we're gonna bend it back in. And we're starting with walleyes, one of my favorite, one of Canada's favorites. We're fishing a main lake rock point. Um, comes out to 25 feet of water. I just pulled up to it and I'm seeing fish all over my electronics. So our jig is sharp. We're gonna grab a rod, see if we can put a couple walleye in the boat. So typically, if you did have the luxury of choosing the size of jig you would use, Kind of want to use the smallest jig and get away with to still feel the bottom. So if you're fishing deeper, fishing in current, you're going to want to use a heavier jig. If you're fishing shallow, um, a lighter jig's just going to help. The fish won't feel it as much. You'll be able to work it a little more, a little more finesse. We're going to go big right off the start. Big old greasy crawler. Probably the biggest reason I don't like crawlers and prefer leeches is they're just so messy. But look at that. That is walleye candy. Come on. Oh, I just lost it. First drop, guys. We're dropping back down. For a jig and rod, I like something a little bit shorter. This is six foot three, medium light, five pound braid for my main line, and then a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. It's a clear chunk at the end to give that little invisibility, but 
Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. We're zero for two so far. So basically with a jig, uh, in this situation, we're you know, vertically jigging for walleyes. I'm just trying to hit bottom and lift it up a couple inches. I can see those fish on the electronics are hanging near the bottom. I just want to keep that bait near the bottom in their face and you know, let the scent of that night crawler do the work. Got him. First fish on the recovered lure. What is it? That's a walleye. All right guys, there. Is a walleye mission complete already, but I don't want to be done walleye fishing because there's a lot of fish down there and I know there's some big ones around, but this guy is coming home with us to get released into the grease. We are off to a good start. The Canadian classic walleye fishing with a jig. There we go. This feels better guys. Ooh, that took a while. We're hooked up again. I gotta be careful, this jig is pretty rusty and pretty old. It's uh, not a typical jig I would use for walleyes. Normally you focus on a nice strong hook. Ideally it's not rusty. I think we got something pretty good. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Oh. It's a netter. Oh, that's a nice big walleye. That is a nice big walleye. Oh, guys, guys. Look at this fish. Rusty old jig and night crawler. And we got a big Canadian walleye. You gotta release these big girls. That is what we came for right there. So good. Look at that big fish. Part one is complete. Next stop, we got some spoons and some spinners. Hopefully we can get some pike, maybe a big old bass. And we're back for part two. We're gonna try to check off two species off the list this time. The mighty smallmouth bass and the northern pike. And I think this lure is gonna be pretty good crossover. This is your typical spinner. This is a MEPS 5 right here. You can see a little bit rusty. It doesn't have a hook on it, but this bait is so good for searching. Um, similar to the musky bucktail, got that big blade that spins. This just has a single blade. That beaded section is lead, so that gives you heavy weight. And we need a hook on the end. So I tried polishing up the blade a little bit. It doesn't look fantastic, but it should have some flash, should give off some movement. I'm thinking we can cross off two species off the list. So we're gonna be just fishing shoreline, nothing too fancy, gonna be looking at some bouldery shoreline, but first we're gonna find a, a treble hook. That looks pretty good. This is such a, a staple bait for, for bass fishermen, for trout fishermen, um, and it's just a good search bait. It's not necessarily uh, the most realistic looking thing compared to you know some of the soft plastics these days or, or live bait. But when that goes flashing past their face, they don't really have time to think about it. It just looks like a, you know, a minnow getting away and they can feel it as well, which uh, you know, is good if you're ever fishing dirtier, dirty or clear water, but definitely shines in, in dirtier water. So we're gonna get this rigged up on a spinning rod. I'm gonna use a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, which hopefully will work as a bite leader for pike and then will be obviously heavy enough for smallmouth, but it's a pretty bad storm behind us. So we're gonna get rigged up and start casting. What's gonna make catching bass on this lure a little bit tougher is because you don't have that same depth control. You know, with a jig, like we did for walleyes, you can fish at any depth you want. Uh, an inline spinner like this is gonna be a lot tougher to fish deep. So hoping that we can still find some fish shallow. And I'm sure pike are kind of everywhere on, uh, on any sort of weedy shoreline. We should have a pretty good chance. I think it'll just be cool to catch anything with this ancient old uh, spinner. I'm sure this bait has some stories to tell and now I'll have one more story. All right, here we go. So basically with the spinner, it's just cast and wind. It's such a good lure for kids, for inexperienced anglers, because you can't really do it wrong. You just, you reel it. You know, some baits take a little bit of finesse. This one, you just gotta make sure that blade's spinning. You're gonna catch some fish. Oh, we got it. We did it. Our second species on our recovered lures, the mighty smallmouth bass. This one we call a very smallmouth bass. We're gonna get bigger ones. We're not, we're not ending this quite yet. Oh, that was him. Is he gonna come back? Maybe we can get him to strike again. The key is just to make sure that blade's spinning. We got him. 
We got him, he's not big. Get him in the boat. There you have the mighty northern pike. They do get much bigger. 40 inches is kind of the goal for a lot of hardcore pike anglers. But these little spinners do damage, not just on little pike, but a lot of big ones. They cover so much water. And look at all the parasites. Look at all the black dots on that guy. I'm not sure if it's focusing nicely, but we're getting this little slew snake back. All right, just looking for that adult smallmouth. And then we're on to our final species. We are hooked up. That was a weird bite. I don't know what we got. Nice bass. Finally. That is a nice big smallie. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Sorted through a couple small ones. We're gonna net this guy. Oh yeah, there we go. Well, not a four pounder, but there's nothing wrong with that tubby little Canadian smallmouth. And that's species number three, one more to go. We got some nice walleyes, we got bass, we got pike, but we're saving the apex predator for last, the toughest. This is actually, I think the fourth time I've tried to film this segment because this fish is so tough to catch. We are targeting the fish of 10,000 casts, the top of the food chain on most freshwater lakes, the muscalunge. And uh, we have a pretty good bait for it. This bucktail uh, is like a classic musky bait on Lake of the Woods. It's what I would say like 80% of musky anglers use when you come out on a calm morning, you hear these tingling of the blades when you see musky anglers all over the place. So they do work really good. Uh, a lot of muskies on Lake of the Woods have probably seen bucktails before, but that doesn't mean they won't eat it. These baits are so good because when a fish nips it, he just gets hooks right away. So I'm, I'm feeling good about this. This bait's in pretty decent shape. Um, I'm gonna sharpen it up a bit. I'm not gonna use the leader that was on the bait. I got a leader of my own, and uh, this is a fluorocarbon leader, so it's a clear leader. So we got a 100 pound braid going to, I think this is a 180 pound leader, and uh, it's a pretty short leader, but it allows me to, uh, to do a figure eight, which is something I'll talk about later, but the sun is rising and that's uh, a prime time for muskie. So we're gonna stop talking, we're gonna start casting, and hopefully it doesn't take us 10,000 casts. The fish of 10,000 casts, the mighty muskie, 9,999 to go. So every cast, you're gonna see me do a little boat side maneuver. It's called the figure eight. So what I'm doing is I'm reeling my leader right to the tip of my rod and I'm doing either a big eight or a big circle. And the thing about muskies, which make them so unique, is they will hunt your bait right beside the boat and they will eat it with a foot of line out. They think they have that bait fish cornered and then when it starts doing that zigging and zagging, they're like, okay, this is time. This is time to eat it. So they will follow your entire cast and then decide to eat right beside the boat. And when that happens, I'm telling you, that is the coolest thing in freshwater fishing that I've seen. And it is why muskies are my favorite. So hopefully we get to see that today, but it might take us a lot of casts. The thing about musky fishing is just any cast that can happen. And you're only fishing for, you know, a couple chances a day. Like my best day of musky fishing ever. We caught seven muskies, but I can more often than not remember days where we caught zero or one. Oh, oh, there was one. There was one. He missed my bait. Oh, that was a good fish. My heart is just screaming right now. I'm not sure if the head cam captured that, but he came up right beside the boat. My mind is just a, a, a blur right now. That's a big fish. So what we're gonna do, that fish didn't get any hooks. He didn't get stung. So I'm just gonna wait for a minute or two. Let that fish chill, let that fish reset. And then we're gonna go back at it. That's the one we want right there. That fish lives on this rocky point, And that's kind of what we're focusing on today is these extended rocky points. It's a very typical midsummer musky pattern. They're gonna have to call that a loss. I love muskies, but I hate muskies. It is my least favorite and most favorite type of fishing because they're just such jerks. 
thing that, make a, that makes a bucktail so good is when these blades pop out, it just moves so much water and the fish can feel it. Fish have something called a lateral line, which is like their sixth sense. They can feel, that's how they hunt. And they can feel these bucktails, feel these crankbaits. I love this weather, these uh, broken clouds, you know, cloudy, sunny, cloudy, sunny on the verge of a storm, windy. That's when I've had some of my best pike and musky days. Oh, I'm feeling it guys. It's gonna happen soon. Oh, big one, big one, big one just dropped away. Guys, that was the one. Ooh, that was around that magical mark, the 50 inch mark. Ooh, my heart is pumping. I don't know if the, the head cam will show that, but that was, that was a big, big fish. All right, we'll keep moving. I'm gonna keep that spot in mind because if we're out here till dark, which we probably will be, we're gonna come back to that guy yet. I think there's supposed to be a storm rolling in tonight around seven, and that's when you come back on those fish and, and sometimes they're just in a different feeding mood. One bite is gonna make it all worth it, guys. One bite, and that's why musky fishing can be so discouraging, because you cast all day. I mean, it's like hunting. I, th I think that's like the best comparison of any type of fishing I've done. Musky fishing resembles hunting the most. There's one, he's interested. She's still there. She's still there, come on baby. Didn't realize how shallow we got there. Just hooked a rock. All right, I'm sure the head cam captured that madness. Guys, we were so close. I went to figure eight and my rod tip hit rocks. That's how shallow we were, I wasn't paying attention. When I saw that fish there, I was like, oh boy. And oh. We've got a couple fish to go on now. When that storm hits, it's gonna be, it's gonna be go time. For musky fishing, I like using a, a pretty, pretty long rod. This is nine feet. Uh, you know, you could go up to 10 feet. I know a lot of people use 10 foot rods. And just for that figure eight maneuver, it saves your back when you're doing it all day. And it just allows you to bomb casts. And then as far as line goes, I'm using 80 to 100 pound braid. And I like using the floral leader if I'm using a jerk bait or something else. And I'd use maybe like a single strand steel leader, but the point of the night has started where we're gonna go back on fish. We're gonna go to where we saw fish. The rain's supposed to start in like 20 minutes. And once the rain starts, it'll be pretty tough to uh, keep the camera gear out. So we're gonna hit those fish. I, I think we have three, they're all good sized fish. They're all, I would say 44 to 50 inches, the three we have lined up. Hopefully this bucktail does it. All right, I put a bag on the camera. We got like two spots, three spots left, I think. Let's see if we can make a miracle happen. Where are you? Come out, come out. We're running out of time. Fish, yes, yes, yes. We're hooked up. Come on, as if. I was just about to call it quits, and we are hooked up with a muskie. Oh, come on, stay pinned. It's a good fish. Oh, oh baby. This is what we were waiting for, guys. A big Lake of the Woods muskie. I'm gonna slide the net to this side. The storm just rolled in. Oh baby, that's a good one. That's a good one. Please, please. We've been battling all day through the elements, casting this same bucktail. Oh, come on baby. It's an interesting game, trying to net it by yourself. Yes! Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What a battle, guys. All day for this moment right here. Oh, my heart. I thought I was gonna lose it on the net job there. I see the second to collect my thoughts. Oh, 
Long pair and little nose pliers. And we're gonna keep this fish in the water. There's no reason to flop it to the bottom of the boat. Oh, that's a nice big fish. She's a little bent up, but we completed it. We got the toughest fish to catch in Lake of the Woods, the muskie. Let's have a look at this beast. Oh man, you might not get a lot of action, but when that's the bite you get, it makes the whole day worthwhile. Wow guys, thank you for coming along on my adventure and uh, make sure to treat these big beauties well. We're putting this girl right back. She is going back. There she goes. Oh, guys, that is why you never give up musky fishing because your whole day can change with one bite. That's a wrap.